It's time for Challenge Flag. New York Post columnist Steve Serby challenges y'all's wild NFL social media hot takes. And this week, we're going to combine Week 18, and we're going to look ahead to the playoffs as well because it's the wild card round. Serby, what's going on, my man? You ready for this? I'm ready, and my friend here is ready. <laughs> All right. Say hello to your friend. Here we go. First one, Aaron Rodgers will be on an AFC team's roster next season. Well, I'm going to have to send my friend flying towards you. Um, I Look, if Tom Brady doesn't end up with the Las Vegas Raiders, that would be tempting for Aaron Rodgers to rejoin his college buddy, Devontae Adams, Fresno State buddy. But, um, you know, he could also decide maybe he wants to host Jeopardy or maybe he wants to go on another psychedelic uh, retreat in Peru. Um, he's going to be thinking about all those things, but... Look, the Packers have the 15th pick in next year's in this year's draft. They've got two young developing receivers in Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. He's got a $58.3 million bonus coming to him in 2023. I don't think he'll want to walk away from that kind of money. I, I certainly wouldn't. Brandon, you, you can afford to, but I can't. Uh, I don't think when push comes to shove, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to want to go out like this in Green Bay. Yeah, you saw he and uh, Randall Cobb walking off the field after they lost to the Lions. It looked like he had some unfinished business there. But when I said AFC, I tried to push you towards thinking maybe he goes, the Jets make a play for him. Because after the comments Monday, do you think Zach Wilson will be on the Jets' 53-man roster first game next season? Yeah, I think he will be, and I don't think the Jets should get rid of him. I, You can't, obviously, he won't be the starter. I, I, they have to continue to develop him, but he has no trade market right now. He's the second overall pick in the draft. Robert Sala and Joe Douglas swear by him. They, they did all their exhaustive research in the draft, thought he was made of the right stuff, still believe he can play in New York. The kid's been humbled, but he's going to be a backup maybe even to Mike White, if Mike White resigns, the Jets will get, I believe they will make a play for either Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo if the 49ers have to unload him because of the Trey Lance draft two years ago. So th the Jets need a competent, experienced quarterback with that defense because next year is a Super Bowl or bust year. Th the Jets are in contention for a Super Bowl next year with that defense. So they need a, uh, a game manager slash playmaker and Garopp a healthy Garoppolo and Derek Carr. I'm not crazy about Derek Carr, but he's certainly an upgrade over what they've had. And, and he can lead the Jets to the playoffs. So they will make a play for either one. And, hey, what about Lamar Jackson? What if, what if he comes free? Could you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah, man, there's a lot of decisions to be made for the Jets front office this offseason. Last but not least for week 18, Russell Wilson will play in the playoffs next year. Let's ride. Well, look, I, I it's hard to bet against Russell Wilson, but I, I really like throwing this flag. Wow. So okay. throwing it. Look, if Tom Brady ends up with the Las Vegas Raiders, that's a hurdle uh, for Russell Wilson and the Broncos. Now, if you tell me that Sean Payton will be the next Broncos head coach, then I wouldn't have thrown the flag. Or Jim Harbaugh. Now, uh, Russell Wilson, obviously, he loves Daniel uh, Dan Quinn, the Cowboys defensive coordinator. And I like Dan Quinn, too, uh, as long as he's not ahead 28-3 to in the Super Bowl. But um, <laughs> I, I think that, look, in the NFL, anything's possible. Russell Wilson is fixable. The Broncos believe that. I believe that. He'll have Javante Williams back from injury, yep. uh, a hard-running running back to go with Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Sutton. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't let Russ cook the way he has cooked in the past. They're going to have to run the ball more, and he needs better coaching than he had this year with Nathaniel Hackett. So, yes, if it's Sean Payton or Jim Harbaugh, otherwise, no. All right. Let's ride. To the playoffs now. Here we go. Here are the hot takes for the playoffs. See what I did there. Uh, the Vikings like are the least scariest team in the NFC. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Where's my... What? 
Well, wait a minute. Come on. What do you mean? What about the Dolphins? You think the vol Dolphins scare anybody? I said the what? NFC. The NFC. Oh, the NFC. Okay. All right. Well, how about the Seahawks? Okay. You know, with their run defense, you know, Geno Smith, God bless him. This is his, he's shown years later that the, Jet, the Jets made a mistake. No, I'm only kidding about that. They, they had to get rid of him. But um, nobody punched out Geno in the Seahawks locker room. That's a plus. But um, <laughs> the Seahawks would be the most vulnerable. I think the Vikings are vulnerable. They don't have a, def a playoff caliber defense. And they're going to be very vulnerable to the Giants, I believe. I'm picking the Giants to beat the Vikings. But um, th it would be the Seahawks, without a doubt, would be the most vulnerable. So that's why I threw the flag. All right, let's stay in the NFC West. The 49ers with Brock Purdy at QB1 will be the NFC champs. Well, Mr. Irrelevant, which I've been called for many, many years, uh, <laughs> has shown that he is Mr. Relevant. He's 5-0. and oh. The kid's got tons of moxie. Hard to believe he was Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of the NFL draft. But look what he's got around him. He's got great coaching. He's got Christian McCaffrey. What a trade that was. He's got... Debo Samuel, he's got Brandon Ayuk, he's got George Kittle, and he's got a tremendous elite defense. This team is pro arguably the most physical team in the league, and my preseason NFL pick for the season was the 49ers in the Super Bowl, even with Trey Lance. So I'm sticking with the 49ers. All right, it's a system, weapons, and a defense. That's the formula to success. Last but not least, with everything that has went on in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl. Well, again, uh, I don't want to pat myself on the back. Uh, I will if it's a Bills 49ers Super Bowl. That was my preseason pick, wow. and I'm sticking, I'm sticking with it. Wow. The Bills are a team. Look, Josh Allen, we know what Josh Allen's all about. Now, he's going to have to beat... Patrick Mahomes, and we can't wait for that matchup in the AFC championship game, but of course he can do it. Uh, he's got Stefan Diggs. He's got Gabe Davis. He's got Devin Singletary. He's got an elite defense coordinated by Leslie Frazier. Um, and of course, DeMar Hamlin. This is a team of destiny. They're playing for the bill for the franchise's first Super Bowl championship in five tries. God bless Marv Levy and that bunch and Jim Kelly. And this is a team of destiny. They're playing for themselves. They're playing for their community. And they're playing for DeMar Hamlin. Bless his heart. Yep. They have Bill's Mafia. Now they have some Bill's Magic. I've always said that, that when that happened, they are going to go out and win that Super Bowl because their why is different. They are playing for something other than self. It's we, not me. Steve Servi, we got second round of the playoffs coming up next week. Can't wait for the challenge flag next week. Thanks for joining us. Anytime. Thanks, Brandon.